Welcome to my project on the ancient world history. It's the class project for Dr. Pamela Parkinson. Our assignment was to compare and contrast and identify similarities between two ancient cultures. For my project I've chosen Egypt and Greece. We were to identify differences between the two cultures, hypothesize reasons for the similarities and differences, and evaluate how the two ancient cultures impacted our modern society. An overview of the two civilizations that I've chosen to work with, Egypt and Greece, are that ancient, Egypt and ancient Greece civilizations are two of the oldest known civilizations in our history. The Egyptian civilization was based in the eastern part of North Africa and is believed to have started around 3150 BC and continued until the end of the Pharaoh rule in 31 BC. The ancient Greek civilization is believed to have been in effect from 1100 BC till about 146 BC. There are many similarities and differences that existed between the two civilizations and we're going to explore some of those in later slides. Though they coexisted during the same times, they were located in different geographical regions that left to can divergent paths. To, as a brief review, we'll look at some of the geographic issues and differences between the two lands. For Egypt, their most prominent feature and one of the main reasons that civilizations were created so quickly was the Nile River. The Nile River is 4,160 miles long and it's considered the world's longest river. It begins near the equator in Africa and flows north to the Mediterranean Sea. And it's south it has waterfalls <coughs> and the delta near the area's uh, river's mouth uh, the water leaves a, a very fine silt which is good for growing crops. And ancient Egyptians tended to live on narrow bands of land on each side of the Nile River. They have what they confer what they refer to as red land and black land. Red land uh, was basically the desert area or, or the non-fertile uh, region and the black land was so-called because of its fertile soil. Uh, Egypt was also isolated uh, as desert acted as a barrier uh, to its enemies. Its sea coast was swampy so there were really no good harbors. Uh, this effectively meant that early Egyptians stayed close to home. Greece, its land makeup, Greek mainland was the peninsula. <coughs> the peninsula sticks out into the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, the southern tip is also a second peninsula called the Peloponnese. Greece includes thousands of islands and it has mountains that cover 70 to 80 percent of it. Uh, this kind of divides the land into different regions. It's a mountainous landscape uh, and it had a lack of uh, rivers which made transportation harder on Greeks. It was difficult to also made it difficult to unite Greece under a single government uh, but it did have a temperate climate. It had mild rainy winters and hot dry summers. Uh, average temperatures were about 50 degrees in winter and about 80 degrees in summer and this encouraged outdoor activities. Uh, one of the main reasons that the Olympic Games came to be about in uh, Greece. It's also its agriculture. Since it was a rocky land, only 20 to 30 percent of the land was good for farming and that was mostly in the valleys. <coughs> but despite it being so difficult to farm, uh, over half of all Greeks were farmers and herders. One of the first things about these two cultures I would like to explore with you are its government. So there were similarities in political landscape. Both civilizations had an upper, upper class that were citizens that were landowners. Uh, religious part, priests were parts of their upper class and the status of women was very low in both cultures and slavery was widely used in both. So. The civilizations had an upper class of citizens that relied on peasants and slaves to, to do the labor to keep their land uh, worked. 
both civilizations were big uh, scientific and astronomy uh, mathematic studies. Uh, religious priests, uh, <clears throat> they had a great say in the political happenings of the time, both civilizations. Uh, we may consider how this contrasts today with the United States separation of church and state. And the status of uh, women was very low in both cultures. And one of the interesting things that came about during my research was uh, both parties did allow and have the right to divorce. Uh, divorce uh, could be done by merely issuing a document that stated that neither party was obligated any longer towards the other. So uh, in a lot of ways this was somewhat uh, good for women because it helped them avoid some of the hardships. Some of the differences in the political landscape was Egyptians uh, had a strong emphasis on central authority while Greeks had were more decentralized. Uh, as we looked at uh, the land use in Greece, uh, it was very difficult for them to have a, a centralized government structure because of the separation of the land masses for its citizens. Uh, it's believed that in Greece, or in Egypt, that one of the reasons for their power structure was that the Egyptians always wanted to have these large buildings, so they had to develop a system or a class system uh, to gather mass number of laborers. To, to work for them. Um, in Egypt, the main ruler was uh, a pharaoh, uh, whereas ancient Greece was made up of city-states. And a city-state would be a major city in all the surrounding areas. Uh, they tended to create, or did create, their own rules and government. Ancient Greeks uh, are very famous for their ideas and philosophies on government and politics. Athens, in particular, was where democracy was first conceived uh, and it was used as a primary form of government. Uh, one of the interesting things that I found was democracy in ancient Greece was very direct where because all of the citizens voted on all of the laws. We also discussed that the women, the treatment of women is very complex uh, and different in both. <coughs> Um, Egyptian law gave women a social status and an independence that was not found in Greek law. Uh, she could do whatever she pleased with herself and her belongings. Uh, women uh, were considered minors, more minors under Greek law. They needed a legal guardian for all their actions. So uh, interesting part about the Egyptians was uh, pharaoh wives were the second most powerful people in the land. So, uh, being referred to as the great royal wife. Now we'd like to discuss Egyptian and Greek art. As you can see, some of the art pieces from Egypt, Greece, their sculptures were different but uh, quite beautiful. Their paintings in Egypt were considered quite colorful and always depicted uh, some sort of um, instructions or rules. As you can see in this tapestry, the hieroglyphics in the background tell a story of, of whatever's going on in the foreground. Egyptian art, on the other hand, uh, some might say was a little bit more uh, whimsical, um, a little bit more exacting as we can notice here and we'll discuss later uh, the use of nudity um, just somewhat uh, part of second nature for Greek art. Greek sculpture, uh, notice their use of marble is a very very common theme and Greek pottery as well. So some of the differences in the art is uh, Greek statues at the time uh, had a great deal in common with uh, Egyptian monumental sculpture. Um, part of this was uh, because the, the Greeks were influenced by Egyptian um, art. Uh, the Egyptians established a long and enduring artistic tradition uh, and Greek art drew heavily on that. Uh, many of the subjects uh, incorporating similar symbols uh, in Greece versus Egyptian art, but then the the Greeks kind of made it their own or reinterpreted uh, through their own eyes and, and their own experiences the, the type of art that they wanted to display. 
Uh, Greek art was <clears throat> more important to the mythology um, and the creation of art, uh, where Egyptians tended to strive uh, for objective representation. Uh, Greeks are very important as the vast majority of them tell us this. Greek sculptures were very important as they, uh, they, the ma majority of them tell us stories about their gods, heroes, the events, uh, mythical creatures, Greek culture. Uh, Egyptians were working more diligently in their art to re recreate the world as they saw it. Some of the differences that we, that, that I uncovered where uh, Egyptian art, uh, particularly in statues, uh, conformed to a, a really strict style. Uh, and most of this was due to the fact that most of the works were commissioned by pharaohs uh, who were going to use the works mo mainly in uh, the symbolic or ceremonial, pur ceremon ceremonial purposes. Uh, Greek art was uh, a lot more liberal. Um, artists in Greece were encouraged to experiment with different concepts and uh, different materials and, and try to portray the world as they saw it. Uh, potteries uh, from the two differentiated because uh, Greeks tended to have paintings and markings. Um, Egyptians rarely did that. Uh, uh, Greek statues uh, explored uh, like the human anatomy uh, they looked at the organs, expressions, muscles, emotions. And Greek statues were not usually based on any kind of symmetry. Egyptian art was more oriented towards religion and, and had two qualities that made it somewhat distinctive. And that was, it was always cubic and frontal, which meant that the shape of the stone or uh, the block that it was carved from could be seen almost always at the base. So the last piece that we want to explore is uh, Greek and Egyptian religion. So as we can see in this diagram, a pharaoh is prepared for his journey into his next life and a depiction of all the Greek gods. Not all, but <laughs> uh, some of the Greek gods. So in Egyptian religion, we saw that uh, both the ancient Greeks, they were polyesthetic, uh, which meant that they, they believed in many deities. Um, in Greece, we had Athena, uh, goddess of war, Zeus, the father of the uh, Greek hero Hercules. Uh, Zeus was also uh, the main uh, uh, god, Pearson, uh, god uh, influence, uh, and Poseidon, who was um, no, the protector of the seas and all water. Uh, Egyptians looked at and, and respected Osiris, uh, who was a uh, first king of it, the mythological first king of Egypt, and uh, one of the most more important gods, Ra, the supreme god of the sun, um, was always represented as a man with a, the head of a hawk. Uh, uh, Egyptians also looked at, <coughs> as well as the Greeks, play, they placed a lot of importance to death uh, and, and a life after death. So um, the idea originally started in Egypt and sort of made uh, the idea of um, dying a little bit more uh, palpable during the time. Uh, it, there, it wasn't such a large mystery, and so they used this as a way to kind of uh, uh, bet people's fears. <coughs> and both of our, uh, both of these cultures also uh, built large structures to honor their their uh, dead uh, pyramids uh, in in the Egypt were built uh, as tombs for the pharaohs and the queens um, the uh, Greeks of course built the Parthenon which was uh, dedicated to Athena uh, she was the goddess of wisdom and the goddess of the city of Athens um, we also find that there are a lot of myths that were that abound during the time, and and the Greeks and the Egyptians both use myths as uh, narratives uh, related to their religions. Uh, this usually concerned the actions of gods and other beings, um, but it was also used to 
explain certain events that, that were otherwise unexplainable during the time. Um, one of the biggest impacts we find that Egypt and Greece had on our current civilization was uh, most of or, or a great deal of the uh, iconoclastic ideals and symbols are still in use today. And finally we'll talk just briefly about the differences in religion. Egyptians believed uh, their, their pharaoh was uh, some sort of god <coughs> who was only answerable to, to a higher form of god. Um, whereas Greeks didn't really have um, this, uh, this large or, or, or big um, belief of, of a divine being. They were, they were more about the philosophy, the thought and moral balance, more so than, than like a religious uh, doctrine. So um, one of the things we kind of looked at was why were Greek gods depicted generally as normal people and Egyptian gods uh, were re represented uh, almost exclusively with animal heads and come to realize that you know the Egyptians believed that some some animals just in and of themselves were regarded as holy in fact uh, most Egyptian towns usually had their own sacred local animal and uh, these animals were <coughs> uh, honored uh, because the, they believed that the animal the gods would come back as that kind of animal only so they spent a lot of time honoring these animals and and giving them a very pampered life the Greeks, in contrast, uh, believed there was, you know, religion, uh, their divine beings sought out being in gardens and trees. And so they spent a lot of time uh, with a little bit more uh, philosophical look at, at how to respect their religious um, idols. Well, that concludes our program and our review of Greek and Egyptian uh, differences and similarities. I hope you found the discussion enjoyable as much as I did uh, recording it and doing the research for it.